Yeah, me yeah. too much. Anyways, and Derek's mom called and said, Is it- oh, I, oh, sorry. Let me put that down. The velocity opener is my jam. Yeah. I use it as my ringtone. I don't. But it's very up to date. Some similar, you know, we'll get a new one sometime in the next 20 years. It's great that like all the companies on there are probably out of business. <laughs> We're one minute late. Yeah. And that's because yeah. Jeff has a PC. That's all I can probably yeah. sum up uh, everything with. That's so, why. But I have a PC. Yeah, Derek's a Mac wiener. He's he, Canadian he's like, PC. I, I would love to be a Mac wiener. I just can't afford it. <laughs> no, nobody wants to be a Mac wiener. Yeah. Are we live right now? Is this going? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're live. Yeah, is this... All right. Is it on? Oh, yeah, of course it's on. That's with that whole intro. And the, I spent a good 15 minutes prepping this. Uh, I got a lot of things for us today. Oh, wow. Exciting. Yeah. I, I didn't do a lot of work on this one, but I think it's pretty close. Ah, I almost got it. Oh, that's, that's not. Oh, you covered my striker, though. I'm upset about that. <laughs> yeah, put me back up again. <laughs> I got Pete dead on. I'm a little. I gotta go this way. What, what did you think I was gonna be doing? Oh, I don't know geez. if I. I don't know if I set it up for a different one, but uh, that's what we're doing today. We got a lot of good stuff for today. Uh, well, at least one thing. We're giving away <laughs> something. Or actually, the box lid. We are given. Yeah, Pete is building it, and, uh, and if obviously, oh, if you... oh no, go ahead. Okay, I was going to say we should announce last week's winners, but no, we can talk about this prize first. That's fine. Oh, uh, you have last week's winners. Well, we, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, you emailed me. I didn't check your work, but you emailed me two names, so <laughs> that's where we're going. Yeah. We've got a comical Levante, which I haven't uh, put the body on yet, but it looks like this. Today's episode is brought to you by, to me, this is like Pee Wee's Playhouse. When this flashes, everybody's going to scream. Nice reference. Anybody watch that ever? It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but today, uh, today, since uh, to me is graciously donating a comical Avante, uh, we will say it, we're sponsored by Tamiya today and brought show brought to you by Tamiya. And you will win your own comical Avante, not the one I am building. And when it arrives... The body comes painted, which is nice. Oh, oh wow. nice! That is nice, actually. Of course, if you well, follow unless you don't want a blue, if you don't want a blue. It sucks. If you follow Velocity on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, you already saw this because I posted some build shots. Uh, so make sure you follow us. And remember, you can buy this hat, like thirteen thousand five hundred stitches. Jeff isn't wearing his. It's, it's Jeff it's, from nineteen eighty five with the DC logo again. It's right there. Uh, it I makes make a bad it. shadow with my lighting. Oh, it's in the back. I see it. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Cost me a hundred dollars to send it to you, so you should probably wear it once. And um, <laughs> yeah, well, or I should preserve it. One of the two. Forever. And ever, but uh, you can buy it. I'm probably gonna make a bundle where you get a, all the back issues with it. I should meant to do that like a month you're ago. You're gonna make a bundle of money. I thought you're like, I'm gonna make a bundle. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I get it. Right. I had a, these were hand stitched, but uh, <laughs> you could buy the hat. And uh, I made a little exit video showing how to use uh, at the end. Uh, I spent three minutes. I learned how to record screen on my iPad. So I made it so I show you how to download a freaking magazine. Because some people don't even know that we're actually a magazine. So just remember that, that you can actually buy a digital download. Put it on your laptop, computer, PC, the, uh, phone, whatever crap you look at videos with on, on the toilet. You can now read the magazine. Just like the good old days, except it's not paper. You still read in the bathroom? I do. Yeah. What else are you going to do? Or Tetris. Yeah. And Jeff's still the only one that has a Game Boy with Tetris on it. I don't know. I bet you a lot of people have Game Boys still. That's a great machine. Seems like there's a lot of people here today. Maybe Wednesday's the night, or at least talking to people. Everyone's saying hello. (laughs) Hello, everyone. You know, kids today will never know what it was like to go to the bathroom. And if you don't have a magazine, you would just read the back of the air freshener can. That's all you had. Yeah. Right. Shampoo. Whatever. Or shampoo. Yeah, they I knew everything. They, they would put nothing good on there ever to read. Shampoo is better. Yeah. Your conditioner is better. 
Wah, wah. Stop <laughs> me, swamp. All right, that's the last Billy Madison quote. For we week. didn't uh, we didn't have time to discuss what we were talking about today because Jeff uh, had to reboot his reboot his computer. Sorry, I had to say it so you understood it. Uh, he was a kind. Yeah, so we we didn't we don't even know what we're really doing today other than we're giving away comical to Mia. Yeah, I know nothing of the topics tonight, which I prefer. I don't. Billy's well, playoffs. Everybody scream. Ah. There you go. But I do. I did actually. Uh, <laughs> Omar's now in on the striker bashing. I don't know what's going on with the striker bashing. Hey, all right. So there's a couple topics today, and, of people. and they're somewhat similar because I wanted to talk about Tamia because it's been around forever, and it's a good topic because there's a lot of stories, and, and and I don't know if it's people nowadays have started it with the Tamia car, but most of us I think dreamed of a Tamia car as our first RC car. Yes. So. Um, I'm going to start with the to me a topic just because that would probably make more sense to be honest with you, and it ties into our other topic, which is the same kind of thing. But to me, are they goofy cars or are they race cars? Well, they're they're not race cars since they shut down the race program. Well, they still make race cars, don't they? They have a TRF series. Yes. I don't think so. Isn't TRF gone? I thought TRF was gone. They make on-road cars. Do they? I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I thought like, TRF was gone. Yeah, these topics are supposed to be more than one word answers, but you're, you're my answer, your no, answer is always my no, favorite. No, no, no. We can, I'm no, not giving a one word answer leaving. I'm, I'm just saying. I, 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 no, but, but I, was, uh, I have false information then myself. I thought I thought um, that most of the TRF, or all the, I thought all the TRF was shut down. I don't know. I have no idea. If it's shut down, then they don't make race cars anymore. If they still make race cars, then the race cars are race cars, and the goofy cars are goofy cars. But anyway, yeah. it's a good question, Derek. I didn't mean <laughs> And, and I would say the goofy cars aren't goofy. They just aren't for racers. Right. Because as no, we're looking look at this picture beside me right now, as we're sitting goofy. looking at this thing down here, um, it's a knock on a somewhat goofy looking car. Although in the time it was pretty amazing looking, but it is kind of spaceshipy, you know, not of this world looking. And the goofier comical one is comical. But, I like the uh, comical cars. I think the comical cars are awesome. I, I enjoy them. Well, I still love the 88 Avante. I still think that looks awesome, um, as do a lot of, to me, cars from that era, because I, I love Robotech and all that Japanese animation stuff. Um, and this, the comical Avante uh, is a TB or a super deformed style, which is a big thing in Japan. You know, you can get a Gundam robot, which has a giant head, a little cartoony body, like a character. And that's a whole thing in Japan is this kind of a, a look um, with, the, with the super deformed style. And yeah, obviously not meant to be serious. You know, this isn't what Tamiya thinks a race car should look like. Obviously, it's a fun, collectible, easy to build, fun to build RC car. So let's talk about Tamiya racing a little bit because, as um, some may or may not know, they had a race program in the U.S. where it was a the U.S. division in charge of more so on the off road development because that was bigger here with the. I think they kind of tried a two-wheel drive, uh, four-wheel drive, off-road. Um, yeah, they had, they had a few, 501 or something. and, and uh, 501X or something. And yeah, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. So it never really took off, even though their on-road touring car was like one of the do most dominant things on the planet for a, quite a long time. Um, but yet, just never really tried to get into at least other forms of racing, because if we're being honest, the Tamiya series was really big and really popular, and they raced a lot of... Uh, For different reasons. Okay, well, you can tell me those reasons, but they raced a lot of, you know, just basically touring cars, but more scale, but sometimes they threw in a goofy class, which was kind of interesting. I remember I covered one race where we raced their Nitro Monster Truck, T what the heck was it? TNX, I think. Was TNX? it the Nitro one? TNX, yeah. TNX. Let's go with TNX. Because I know they're the electric one, and uh, but the, the but the nitro one, they made us race that as like the media oval, and I think I raced uh, George, I won, thank you. But um, <laughs> if that's my only accomplishment in life, I should probably just end it. But um, they have some racing, and to be honest with you, this goofy class when they throw it in, I think at the Reedy race one year they did like a. Um, like a Kong head or, you know, they threw in the odd ball racing class that seems to be more fun. And to be honest with you, if you told me we were all going to race comical Avantes, I would probably be more into that 
now. I'd be super into it. In fact, the Avante, the Bama Avante, this is a transponder mount. It comes with one. Because in Japan, they race everything, pretty much. I mean, they have all kinds of comical style classes or classes for unserious vehicles. And they're easy to find on YouTube. But you watch that stuff and you're like, wow, those don't go fast, but it looks like a lot of fun. And I see a lot of people smiling and having a good time. And it looks like they're doing it at a shopping mall and lots of people are seeing it, which is probably yeah, good for the hobby. So, yeah. yeah, all that stuff. So let's go back to the racing because Jeff said it was popular to me. Uh, to me, his race series for whatever reason. What reasons? Well, I, I don't even know a lot about it. I mean, you've been oh, that's a good than... answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it, it's one company, so like they have. I don't know. I think they have a class for each of their cars or something. So you don't have to worry about your if your F one car sucks because associated to CRC are going to come on and dominate you because they're not going there. So it's a different type of racing. I think it's great. I think they did a great job with it. They had the, the locals, the regionals, and the, and the worlds, I think, or whatever yeah. their big one in Japan. I, I think it was good, but it's not it's not your conventional racing. It was only Tamiya cars, and it was specific classes for cars that Tamiya made. And uh, they didn't have to worry about the other manufacturers in that particular series. So it, it was a great series, as far as I remember. You know, like an ultimate spec class. Then uh... I had lots of my friends from Canada, a few of my friends from Canada who, who made Japan and, and, and went to that, and, and it was a big deal. Like the guys that were into it loved it. No, I w and, and, and the whole thing you guys are talking about with, with if we were racing Avantes or these comical Avantes, I too agree it would be awesome. Uh, it doesn't, you know, they race lawnmowers. You can race anything. I don't okay. think they. I don't think they race lawnmowers anymore. Oh, crotch shot. Yeah, I don't know if they. Do or not. <laughs> yeah, I mean Bob Stormer was. I, I'm pretty sure a, 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 a big lawnmower racer. I think at one time was he not? Uh, yeah. Yes, he was. So. Anyway, the point is they race everything. You can race anything. You race whatever. Well, I'm sure for Tamiya, it was, you know, they said, well, we can spend money putting on a single make series, and we've got this gorgeous track, um, or we can spend money trying to go all around the world and race all the other brands, and uh, which inevitably means they also get coverage. I mean, I think it was a smart move for them to do it, and people loved it. I mean, it, the customers certainly enjoyed it. And to me, I mean, to me, it's for everyone. There are certainly people who are just casual Tamiya buyers, but there are lots of guys who are Tamiya guys. That's their brand. Sure. And they collect them and do all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, I, I think. Well, uh, we're almost all Tamiya guys because almost everyone on the planet started with Tamiya, at least if yeah. you're our age. And I don't know if that, and like era. I said, I don't know if that's true anymore. No, no, that's why if you're our age and you got started in our era. No, it's absolutely yeah. not true now. And it has been true yeah. for probably two decades. And, but, and this, but if you started in the 80s, you, you got a Tamiya car. And, and this dovetails into our conversation about if you know what could tracks us when the world's to me it builds awesome cars but as someone pointed out like oh i don't think to me has really had the mojo since they had david john and this other pro racer if you don't have the pros if you don't pay them to come race your stuff they're not going to race your stuff you're not going to win anything it's not really about the car because i guarantee you to me his top of line cars could beat anything with the right driver at the helm but if you don't decide to go and race at that level by paying drivers to run your stuff and ship them around the world, like you're not going to make an impact on racing at, at that level. It, it gets more, it, it's, uh, you're right, but it gets more complicated than that, obviously. You, you, there's no amount of money you can pay, well, there is, but you're not going to be able to pay a good driver to, to, to run a car that can't win. They, they, in the end, these guys. The I'll give you an example of that in a second. What I, what I want to mention is that I forgot because I did something smart. So, in order to. Oh, like, you did it. It's Wednesday. So, I, Monday, I wouldn't have done anything smart. Wednesday, I got one thing. So, right. in order to win the. Uh, comical. Sorry, I got to do my Pee Wee's Playhouse. The comical Avante. Just the kit. No, no whatever else you got to get yourself. So if you don't have a radio or batteries, you're going to have a cool looking model. Uh, you are going to have to get something for free. So if you're not into getting a free issue of the magazine, which I'm posting the link on the comments right now, it's also in the description of the broadcast. Uh, you use that, download it, and we're going to pick the winner from that list of people. And we will pick it. Eh, we'll leave it open since it's not just people watching live. If you watch this another rerun, thank you for watching it uh, yesterday or whatever, today, tomorrow. Um, yeah, but yeah. whatever it was. But uh, you're going to win it by go entering there. This way, uh, it's much easier to keep track, to be honest with you. And I can see who entered, and we don't have to fumble around and say, the person with the ugliest picture, you know, will win. Although funny, but uh, uh, there, Pete built his. The review will be in there. I was going to bring my grasshopper in here because I have the comical grasshopper, but I forgot. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. I will repeat that uh, link because I don't know how long it's going to stay up there. But if you guys are in the comments, obviously copy and paste it. Go there now. Download a free issue. I think I put issue 36, 37, one or more of the current yeah, ones. Yeah, we need a newer oh. free issue. Yeah, good. You got a free issue. And there's, others. I think, two other free issues you can download. Issue number one, I think, is free. And then I put some other random one. I have no idea. But if you find it, it's free. And, and by the way, $10, which is nothing in RC money, gets you literally 40 issues of uh, Velocity RC cars. So why you yeah. wouldn't do it is insane to me. And you get each new one because you're now a subscriber. But it's, it's ten bucks. I mean, I, come on. What can you're you all insane. Every one of you is insane. Yeah, Joe's not going to win again. By the way. No, and Tony too. <laughs> Tony's like entered. Tony, yeah, you're definitely not winning. <laughs> you're declined. We should probably say this again because I, I mean, I'm trying to listen to you too, and also uh, peruse the comments. Every once in a while, we might react to a comment, but people are making really good comments, and we, we do tend to ignore them, which we're not able to keep up with it. So just realize we're not – well, we are ignoring you on purpose. But, uh, yeah, that's just not part of – we just don't – we don't have time to – anyway, I notice a lot, lots of really good comments, probably every week. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know why I just said that. I just thought I'd say that. Hey, <laughs> I have winners from uh, last week. <laughs> One's my buddy. <laughs> Is uh, it really? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, it's yeah, fixed. Tom, Tom, Tom Dees uh, was the Facebook winner. Tom's my Tom's an old friend of mine, um, and uh, Earl Moorhead, Moorhead, Moorhead uh, is the YouTube winner of the fifty dollars. Um, uh, fifty dollars of camo. Uh, of, tri- of fifty dollars in, in camo paint mask from Triple X Me. So I'll get a hold of you guys, uh, or you get a hold of me, and we'll I'll get a package out your way, faster than I got Peter's package out, which I didn't get out yet. Yeah, or mine. Sorry, Peter. Or I'm yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you, that six to eight weeks will fly by before it's yeah. <laughs> Remember the old school when it took six to eight weeks to get something? That's what Jeff's still yeah. in that era. Yeah. Yep. If you're lucky, by the way. Yeah. Um, right. So back to uh, Tamiya, and we're tying back into this uh, goofier race car stuff. Um, do you think how. To me, I, I love Tamiya, and I, I, I met Mr. Everyone Tamiya. Was. I have his book, and if you've never read the book of Tamiya, it's actually, and I don't read, so I did read this in the bathroom. Uh, it went by fast. It's a good book, but it explains the history of Tamiya, and it's very interesting and in how they kind of got into everything. But you kind of look at it as like some of the companies have been in forever, and I don't know if they've changed. Uh, Which is some of the problem. Some of the problem, I guess. I don't know. But they're White still here. Questions. White yeah, plastic but, uh, bushings. Those are my favorite. That's so. it. I mean, there's a lot more it to than that, but white plastic bushings. That's ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. Right. But how have they stayed in business this long? Well, as someone said in the comments, they, they still have a huge fan base. Uh, right. Uh, there's got to be a nostalgia component to it. Thank if, you, fans. If, if, if anyone um, started with it, they're, they're probably going to uh, remain in love with the company. And they do make cool things. It's, it's just different. It's that they're... Uh, I'll say it again, white white plastic bushings. Uh, Traxxas gives you a 12-turn motor. They give you a, to me, it gives you a silver can Mabuchi still. Um, the, the the plastics, the, the the brushless is non-existent. I think they just recently added a brushless, brushless component to their speed control, but still, they're, they're, they're still in the 80s and 90s with, with many of their cars, it seems. And that's fine, it works. Um, but it, it's it's difficult when you're going to spend more money on a, on a to me a kit and a separate radio and battery and charger then say i don't want to sound like peter again but say a traxxas rustler that goes 35 miles an hour out of the box and is waterproof and has oil filled shocks and and maybe not all ball bearings but important ball bearings in the transmission they they, they, they listen it's working for them it seems they're still in business <laughs> but uh uh i i think they should be updating a few things white plastic bushings well, as Omar says here, who's a smart guy, he says, to me, it caters only to their domestic market, which supports them, and they have built a huge worldwide fan base, which is true. Uh, to me, it very much well, only their domestic market. What, what's the, what's Japan? Sixty million? Like, I mean, that, that that I mean, maybe that's true, but you can't you you can't just survive yeah, well, it. He said that they have built a worldwide fan base, and um, what I was going on right. to say was they they set up to me America because they they wanted to conquer America, and certainly still do. But I'm not sure Tamiya America was had a lot of influence over Tamiya Japan to build a right. car that like America would probably want the most. Uh, they still don't have a slash competitor, for example. 
Um, but I, I'm I'm only theorizing about the dynamics between to me Americans and to me Japan. But certainly to me it does what to me it wants to do. They are not yes. really followers, you know. Um, they uh, uh, yeah. they do what they think is going to work, and uh, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And they're also just a huge company. Um, uh, you know, Tamiya owns their own factories. They've got them in the Philippines, New Japan, and elsewhere. Um, huge in static plastic models, obviously. Educational. Right. Yeah. They also do stuff outside of the hobby industry. I understand. I remember uh, Tamiya being Tamiya, Tamiya being very proud that they were manufacturing tiles for the space shuttle. They had some kind of an aerospace component that uh, they were contracted to, to build. So it's just a tremendous company. And they I, I, I don't I, I don't want to pass rumors around, but I had heard uh, years ago that they were they were so big that they bought their own printing press, which I don't I, I know I don't know a lot about that industry, but I think they're like a million dollar that was a good investment. purchase. They're so big that they needed their own printing press for all their instructions and, but, and box art and whatnot. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that because to me it certainly had gorgeous glossy catalogs and the RC guidebooks and stuff, which are right. super comfortable and beautiful. That and when Mini Four Wheel Drive was like the biggest thing in Japan, that was the number one publication. Was the Mini Four Wheel Drive? Um, I don't know if it was a manga or just a, a book about the hobby aspect, but but that uh, content devoted to Mini Four Wheel Drive was the biggest thing. And maybe they were printing their own stuff there. But I would I would be unsurprised if they just bought their own printing uh, business to handle. Yeah, I don't that. want to I don't want to spread rumors, but I, that that was a, a conversation I had with industry people years ago. And I, I, mean, I think it, that would have been a rumor sense. from the nineties. Well, right, and that's absolutely right. Yeah. See, the problem is, well, yeah, because I've also heard some of their sales numbers before, uh, back from the '90s and early 2000s, which might be completely useless now. So, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with you. Right. When, when you're in this industry for three or more decades, then what was true in one era may not be true now. That's fair. What is the one to me a kit that you would own? To me, a striker. It's the only one that anyone should own. Oh, good. Uh, that dude's on. Or the, or the Theo, Sonic. Uh, Theo Ball is not here again. So. Yeah. Or the Sonic. What is it? Or the Sonic Fighter. It's the only. That's really the only two to me vehicles that anyone ever wanted. That's. That's. You know. It's pretty hard to argue against that, other than. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, there's no argument. Uh, so, what are you asking? Like, are you asking what? You, what you we would want that they would have made that they didn't, or that? Well, what's the one happen? thing? I mean, they make two hundred thousand different kits. I, yes. I kind of made a joke in a review one time when I did the Kong head where it was like the human centipede of RC cars, but I feel like they just get drunk and say, <laughs> I got a bunch of parts and if I smash it together in this, we can make a kit. Because sometimes that's what it looks like. Yeah. A nice body. Yeah, they had a car that was, the whole car was a transmission. They had a truck where the gears, I'm pretty sure went from front Kong to head. back. Like that, they didn't put a shaft in or a belt. I think they Kong just head. put gears. Yeah, was that they, the Kong they head? A bunch of them. This, this car is gears that's from front to back. back. Oh, that is that the car? Okay, I don't build a lot of to me. Yeah, see, that's that's funny to me. <laughs> and, and I bet you those gears all have white plastic bushings in them too. You're you're really missing out because to oh, me, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's okay, right? That, yeah. That's ridiculous. To me, well, I know, like you think like, oh, to me, a low tech. This car is spectacularly high tech. This thing is a tech monster with plastic bushings in it. Um, in, terms of, yeah. in, in terms of the intricacy of the molds and the quality of the sure. injection molded parts, I mean. This thing is a spaceship sure. to be a simple RC car. Just like, for that matter, like the engineering that goes into a, a Hyundai minivan will blow your mind to get them to reach a price point with features on, like the best engineers at Hyundai or any full-size car company, they don't necessarily work on like the hot rods and the sports cars. They work on the stuff that has to sell for under 20 grand or whatever the lowest price car is these days. Um, so to me, you know, they really are incredible. It's an incredible engineering company. And certainly, if you, want to, if you look at the TRF stuff, gorgeous race cars. I mean, beautiful. absolutely. Um, that five hundred one X that we referenced earlier, if, if if I'm thinking of the correct car, it was was yeah. I mean, everything they made was beautiful. But like some some of those cars, you just looked at, and you're like, unbelievable. Yeah, right. I'm, I agree. Yeah. So I think for to me, and this is certainly true for me. I look at it to me uh, like a like a the Kong head that that platform, and so many other models. And it's like that looks like it would be fun to build. And incidentally, I'll run it. Like I'm going to run this car. I'm looking forward to running my comical Avante, but I built it with the bushings because why not? I'm going to run it like once a month for one battery and pop some wheelies right. and have some fun and take some pictures of her Instagram and stuff. This isn't something I'm going to run all the time. No, you didn't put a, fa you should put a faster motor in. What's Fred that? usually throws the bearings in when he sends us a car. So is Fred still to me? I'm assuming Fred's still to me. Yeah. Yes. He usually throws in a bearing set for us when we. Thank when you, we Fred, for donating the comical. Yeah, thanks, Fred. <laughs> I didn't get bearings. Throwing a bearing Fred. set for whoever wins it. <laughs> like, um, 
But I mean, you can certainly put the bearings in it. And thank goodness bearings are cheap. Remember when bearings like a hundred bucks? Remember that's, that? That's, but that's my point. That's the yeah. point. It's bearings are four, are four cents a piece now when you buy them in bulk. Like I, I made the number up. There's no cost to bearings anymore. Like it's that's what's that's to me that's ridiculous. That's silly. Traxxas does again. Uh, Traxxas <laughs> does a, 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 a good job. Well, here I'll do a little bit. Of, I'll do it. I'll do a two 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 diatribes here. Traxxas does a good job because when they're trying to cut costs, they'll give. Um, bearings say in the transmission and, and the brass bushings uh, mm -hmm. on the axles, uh, for example, to, to bring some cost down. Now, I will say, if you are going to have bushings in your in your vehicle, uh, uh, then plastic is better because the plastic won't wear the shafts. And if you have a brass bushing, you're going to wear all the shafts out. You're going to banana all your shafts. And if you don't get bearings right away, when you do, now the bearing won't fit tight on the shaft and the inner race will rotate and it won't be nearly as effective as a bearing supposed to be. So there is a, a component where if you're going to put a piece of crap in the box, then put the white plastic ones in and, and and maintain all the other parts on the car as much as you can for when you do put the, the ball bearings in. But it, it shouldn't be happening at the cost of bearings these days. Maybe Japanese bearings are still expensive, but bearings in China are, are pennies. Like, they're nothing. Right, but not compared to a bushing that is a penny for a pound. No, no, I get that, and I get that, and I get that when you spend a dollar, I don't know, years I forget old. the math, a dollar turns into eight dollars at retail, whatever it is. I get it all. I understand it all. I'm in manufacturing myself. We have a camel mask that uh, I can go through the numbers with. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no. It costs I, listen, it costs $30 I, I, to make, I, I but you can buy it for five ninety five. What's that? Camel mask costs uh, $30 to make, but you can buy it for five ninety five. Five, but yeah. Yeah, I have okay. a product on a side note. I have a part of my glue, my picture glue, which is my by far my biggest seller. Um, I, I There's one place in Alberta, uh, Canada that I sell to or, or actually most of Alberta that when I the way I have my website set up with shipping and all this stuff, when I sell to this area or to, to Alberta, I actually lose something like eight dollars every time I sell a bottle of glue. I, it would be cheaper for me to cancel the order to that area and mail the guy a five dollar bill and just and just and I would save. I would actually save more money than what I do. That's just a little side note on that had nothing to do with anything. Your mail system sucks. Yeah, no, it's not as subsidized as, as other countries, like China, for example. Yeah, we don't live there either. No, but I mean, right. Some countries subsidize their mail so that their exports are. are so I'm not, here's, I'm not, I'm going to get off your stupid shipping issues. Um, <laughs> I don't know why we, I started talking about that. Go I don't on, know yeah. either. But uh, go on. on. Talking, yeah, <laughs> talking about uh, dumb things in Tamiya kits. And this isn't a knock on Tamiya. They're just, you know, uh, one, there's still kits that only take round, like nickel metal hydride shape packs. <laughs> and right. two, they have, and, and they're not the inventors of this stupid connector, but it's called the Tamiya connector because that's who I remember. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah. We need to get We need to get rid of those two things. And I can't imagine that it would take a lot of money, but uh, right. I don't know. Well, I mean, when you, when you guys are high and drunk at the board table and you're like, let's... Let's make this fucking crazy thing. Think about some bushings that, you know, or the battery that fits in America. We're square. Right. You know, ding dong. We're square. If you look at any modern Tamiya car that's not using old molds, it's square. It takes a, a, a square edge lipo battery. I know you can't yeah, see that's it. Right. Yeah, okay, good. So they're uh, slowly. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think the Comical Grasshopper took a, round, a square one. It does not because it's built on the old platform from the Wild Willy 2000. Oh, but when they when they tool up for a new car, they make sure it can accept a square battery, a square cornered battery. Um, yeah, and uh, or if they're retooling, you know, an older model, they they'll they'll do that. Um, and and, since, and since we always bring Traxxas into this, I also hate that Traxxas has two different size batteries. I'd like to uh, slap someone in the yeah. face for that, but I get whatever. Shut your damn mouth. No. <laughs> um, you know, there's a Traxxas employee here right now, so watch it. No. Um, what to me it does do that I love that is goofy but I think great is uh, this stuff. I, I love these. These are great. Yeah, they're funny. This is my uh, favorite one of all uh, time. Here, I love this kid. And sorry about your plane. <laughs> what is that, a radio interference? Like your your antenna based radio is gonna knock an airplane out of the sky? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, All right, somebody, are we done on this topic? What no, are we somebody just com commented on Tamiya likes uh, the life life he packs. So do I, but nobody uses them. So, well, I mean, this is another topic we should have one day about why life should have been the battery we chose, but we are willing to burn our houses down to get yeah. more power. <laughs> oh, I got two, I got more volts. And now yeah, if the whole like, industry just agreed, it would have been fine. And we, we, but anyways, that that could be another topic one day. It actually is another topic. We'll we'll save that. We're going to put that one in the piggy yeah, bank. Right. And forget about it. Yeah. 
We also haven't talked about your mom, and and we had been trying to for a month for weeks. You have changed your hat for that. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. So here's right, the. What, is there another? We didn't see. There is another topic, topic and it kind of ties into that because uh, again, to me, I make some bizarre looking uh, vehicles, and I, you know, I use the term ugly, but you can call them. Uh, uh, ugly and strange and bizarre you know there's been a lot of weird like you know we were just talking about the gears from end to end and three gear cases stitched together and the human centipede and i don't know which one you'd want to be in the centipede would you want to be the front the middle or the end which is the ideal position omar is is tebow tybo tebow see he insults so many people's vehicles he needs aliases is that real? Are you making that up? Yeah, I'm not he even... said right there. He's, he's, he just wrote it. He said, uh, oh, I don't know. It went away. Oh, yeah. Well, and for the last time, so. I'm Tebow. And the striker is still the second worst to be a guy. <laughs> I still like the guy. But he's got I many names. That, I don't know that Tim already just watched the video, but I'm pointing to the screen like he can see what I'm, fuck, what I'm pointing to. I don't try to see. Try not to <laughs> You're swear. dropping the bombs tonight, huh? That's good. Well, try not kids. <laughs> PG. We're PG-13 right now. Yeah, sort of. Right. He but so to make the other I didn't want to pick on Tamiya. I wanted to focus on Tamiya because, uh, you know, I, I am a Tamiya fan. You know, I, my first car no, was a Falcon. Are. My first car was a Falcon only because I couldn't afford the Fox. And that was the first car I wanted. But uh, the Tower Hobbies combo I could afford for my mom at Christmas was uh, the Falcon. Mom, I was happy. There's a reference um, to your mom here. Thank you. Uh, so it also made me think they made some ugly ass cars. I mean, uh, all right, I'm going to put a little few pictures up here. Uh, let me find the right order here. So, uh, <laughs> some of them may have disappeared, but I'm going to start with uh, this. Brilliant. I love it. Does, do you, is this one of the strange, ugly, and bizarre cars? Yes. See, here's what, I'll, here's what I'll say. I think I know why I was drawn to this. I think, well, I don't think. Blue blue and white are my favorite color combinations. Right. And that right. looks very Formula One-esque for an off-road vehicle. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I think it's well, a great looking I think it's awesome. I love it. I think it's great. It's a piece of crap. The chassis broke when you looked at it <laughs> at the front. By the I also love there. the, uh, I don't know, what, even the call, screwdriver dampers in the front. What the hell Look are those? Look at that beauty. Look at the beauty. Yeah, but they all did that. They all had a, a friction uh, a screw with a spring. Uh, uh, the the Hornet had it. The Grasshopper had it. The I mean, Falcon was oil filled on the front, and and a number of others were. But if they were going with a friction shock, it was a single wishbone, uh, with a with a, a screw and a spring. All it right. Somebody fine. somebody else want to think talk about what cars the ugliest ones they've thought about. Well, I put some of the goofballs on that uh, image that we had as the. Space saver for this. Um, oh, here, here, here. Oh, yeah. gotcha. I put no thought into this. I didn't yeah, even. Yeah. I don't know. So that that's a Harobo Alien mid in the lower left, which is oh, pretty yeah. good. Oh, I did forget about that car. I had no idea what that was, I, and I didn't yeah, even I read it. About that too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then you got the Tamiya Fire Dragon, which is pretty standard kind of anime-looking, you know, sci-fi themed uh, yeah. model for Tamiya. Um, that doesn't look weird to me for Tamiya. That looks normal for Tamiya for me. Yep. Yeah. Then that car with the, the front wheel drive buggy there. I wanted to show the one that's a camel paint job. That's like the most famous front wheel drive buggy of all time, but all the photos were super crappy. Um, but front wheel drive, two wheel drive buggies look bizarre, except for the Kyosho Maxim, which looked pretty normal. Um, yes. But we, yeah. we just Google front wheel drive, uh, two wheel drive RC buggy. You'll see some crazy designs for sure. All right. Here's another. This is going to be controversial. Controversial. It's oh, nude. I'm excited. No, I I am not a fan. I don't know why the world went crazy over this thing. That's a quintessential Tamiya idea. You know, let's build no, a three wheel scooter that has a super engineered leaning system. You know, well they the, flip the roll center in the, in the CG. It's it's like a motorcycle. You just flip the roll center in the CG and it rolls in. Oh, simple. That's simple. Easy. It is simple. That's why a motorcycle rolls in and a and a and a, and a car rolls out. It's a, it is simple. It's a, it's, yeah, physics. But it's weird looking. And I'll be honest with you, actually one of the classes that I would like to try to race would be that one because I watched uh, the crazy Japanese. Oh, hold on a second. Something's missing here. Yeah, if you look up the manual for that car, you'll see it's a banana's design. It's not just like, oh, the chat just flops one or the other. It's no, no, no doubt. And I'm, I'm not arguing that. Yeah, yeah, right. I, was, yeah, they, I wasn't downplaying the, the brilliance of the design. 
the racers in there started doing the like LED lights and stuff. So it was like, it was like drift meets the crazy, you know, anime car culture of Japan. But I like the idea of it almost being a motorcycle because if you ever actually raced a motorcycle, they were really difficult to run. You can get you can get good at them, but it was like you know you needed kind of winding, flowing tracks, which we really don't have. And, and there's some there's some nitro uh, motorcycle races on YouTube, which is exactly as you, you described, big like European yeah. style eight scale uh, right. open tracks, and it looks awesome on, on on the proper course. It looks super fun, but yeah, otherwise bikes suck for RC. Uh, so another well, one of the things I don't have the picture I didn't upload. I, I have the super ugliest one that I found, and uh, I'm saving that one for like the dessert. Um, I think the Kyosho MP10T, the new one, is disgusting looking. Oh, the, with the weird body. With the yeah. like, it looked like it ran into a wall, and then they cut the body off there. I yeah. get the design, and in some angles, I don't mind it. But when that's why there's there's uh, I didn't Techno did a weird body too a, a, a couple years back on one of the truggies or something. I think that's the thing. Everyone's yeah, I, well, we can argue that we. Things. A lot of the trucks lost uh, somewhat resemblance of an actual truck a while ago when we went to somewhat. cab, cab yeah. four. I, I mean, the, the truck it never really looked like a truck. No, uh, right. well, two wheel drive, two wheel drive off road. At one point, sort of had square, normal looking bodies, and then we all went to these like, you know, oh, we need more traction in the front, so we're going to push the cab all the way forward. And uh, well, yeah, right, yeah, ugly, you know. Uh, they I'm look not cat I like cat forward, but yeah, it doesn't look like anything. Yeah, they look normal, but I mean, the, one of the things that I think keeps blowing people out of racing is that when I, I, scale tends to draw normal people in a little bit. Yeah, yes, well, no, you, listen, you're gonna love this. If you, that's what Mini Z is known for. It's scale. They they were they have super realistic bodies. Oh, I, but all, but, I, but thought everyone, for, I thought it was known because you can go in reverse. Yeah, no, I knew something was coming. Uh, no, yeah, that you, was you that led was, yourself into that one. I did not yeah, go for that. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, there are classes you can get into that are super realistic, but I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm, a, a, maybe I'm alone on this one. I couldn't care less. When I'm racing, I don't, I don't care. It, like I would, pro I, I'm more interested in the vehicle performing. So if cab forward's the way, or if a polycarbonate body rather than a hard plastic body is the way to go, or whatever it is, I, I, I but I'm sure many people would argue well, uh, that. But yeah, this well, hobby has been realistic in the racing sense for. for very, very, very long. Well, we used to care about that, did they not? That they would they would have rules to encourage somewhat scale looking vehicles because they were afraid of that. Not in would... anything I've ever done, and I've been just like you guys. Yes, I've been doing do. as well. Well, no, I don't. Do you ever go to? A, did you ever go to a racetrack and they made you put the mesh in the window or put a driver in? No, I mean never no, no, in any not, racing. Not to that degree, but where they would say you can't have giant, you can't have super skinny front tires on a truck. When the RC ten T first came out, Roar said no. That that's not a truck. If it has, they didn't skin. do that. They didn't do that for cosmetic reasons. They do it. They did it because I think when uh, see that was actually an era of the of of racing that I really enjoyed, where Associated looked at the rule book and said, "Hey, well, there's no yeah. tire. There's no tire width rule, and and we can save some weight and and, and get just as much steering and blah blah blah." And they won that's a race or two because of it, and, and then the rule changed. I, I I actually enjoyed that stuff. But as far as I know, that rule wasn't changed for cosmetic reasons. It, I think there was an advantage at the time with that tire and. And they decided that, you know, why have everyone start running that narrow tire? We'll set up the width rule now is, is my is my guess on that. I don't think I've never seen Roar or anyone say, like, it doesn't right, look right. If they said, let's have a width rule, they could have said, all right, we're going to let you run narrow tires. Because it wasn't like the whole world had huge backstock of 2.2 inch tires. And they that was consideration. They could have done anything because. No, I know. This is, sort of, this is sort of like my dry argument. If if that narrow stadium truck tire had an advantage then everyone would just release it. And then, so I, I guess there is a component of look because then everyone would just end up running it and everyone's in the same order as they were before. So why not just leave it? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with, with you, Jeff. They, they said, this is an advantage that we don't want someone to have. But when we make the rule, should we make it, just make narrow tires legal so everyone can produce them and they'll know how no, I narrow get it, I get it. So maybe there was a component of, of, of look. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, they used to have a rule that said you had to have a four-door body in sedan class. I remember Gary Kyes was like, this is stupid. I can just draw an extra door on in Sharpie, and now it's a four door. Right. It's a one rule, which I agree with. But they did that because they, they wanted to make sure the cars didn't turn into probably, you know, if they could have seen the future, what they would look like, they probably didn't want them to look like that. Bars of soap that looked nothing like right. sedan. Cab Ford was actually illegal when it came out as well. That was a big controversial design. Right. 
I didn't know that. I didn't look like a truck. So I think I think some of the classes that last in racing are usually ones. I mean, and I'm not talking pro stuff where it's exploited for profit. I'm talking the shit stuff people normally enjoy has more scale to it at this point, especially now. I mean, like some, the, the, the Tamiya race series has been around forever, and that's ultra scale. You know what I mean? That that has scale requirements, and I think you see more enjoyment at a Tamiya race than you know going to the track where people are angry, you know, and taking each yeah, other. Yeah, they're not out. having more enjoyment. They're not standing in their high five and going, "Look how real that car looks." They're having well, more you, enjoyment for me for think, probably various Derek, reasons. Derek, you, you've touched on something that I want to talk about in, in this context of what's good for racing. High fives. I would love it if all buggies looked like Jay Halsey's RC10 from the Associated. That'd be more fun for me. But I'm not, and I think for people who walk into a track and if they see these super realistic buggies, that's enticing. But I would say that what probably turns people off from racing is they don't. It's not that they go to the RC track and they say those cars look weird. I don't like this. It's the whole atmosphere for those bad tracks. I know there's great ones too. I'm not saying every track is like this, but when it's like, wow, these are all kind of guys of a certain age group of a certain look of a certain temperament who I probably don't want my kid hanging around. That is a bummer for me. I don't agree with that. You said that before. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. I, 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 I don't think that's the case personally. I don't agree. By the way, a track, think, the track just opened uh, in California, El Centro, a couple places out of this, but they have a bar there and I may drive an hour and a half to go to that track. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's really good. Yeah. I don't like know if it's save, you know that saved movie theaters when they started serving alcohol there you know so beer saves everything. Sure. There you go. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't catching all tracks like that, but we certainly well apparently you haven't. But in Canada, everyone's nice. But um, well, that is true. Very true. We've yeah. all probably been at a track where we've seen the behavior on the driver stand reach a low point where you would say to yourself, "Boy." I would be disappointed if a dad and son walked in right now to find out what RC racing is all about, and they saw this. Yeah, you know, but as, as, as yeah, but again and again, like, listen, I, I haven't been racing as much as I have over my last thirty years. But I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a veteran. If if I saw that, I'd smack the guy. I, I wouldn't smack that. I would shut up. You shut up, dude. Stop your your whining. Well, just so I, I, I just don't experience it. I don't experience this in. in it, I haven't seen it. I mean, there's always a rare case where you get some some douche who's, who's acting like an idiot. But no, I don't see the radio throwers and the screamers and, and and the things that make families feel uncomfortable in any of the atmospheres I've been in. It's it's overly welcome, and no, overly welcome. And, and exactly. even the fast guys are often like I'm I'm a pretty fast local guy. I'm constantly going over and like even unwarranted. I'm like, hey, listen, you this isn't right, and helping the guy out. I, that's how I experience the, the, the track and see other yeah. people. I don't, I don't see these. But but no doubt we've all seen the YouTube videos or 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 seen the, the the things on social media where where there's some idiot who's who's flaring up. So yeah, I mean it happens. But this this is this is a stereotype for the hobby that just isn't. It's like a fat marshal. Not all marshals are fat. Not every not everyone who's fast is grumpy and angry and throwing radios. It's it's a I I, I mean I don't know if we're going to talk about the, the racing thing. I don't think racing's broken at all. I think the people are broken. I think their expectations are broken. I think. Uh, well, by yeah, the way, this, this is a whole other topic. I think race, racing's always been broken. No, it hasn't been broken. What's what's broken now is. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop. Hold yeah. on in your, in your mouth. I got to do uh, another uh, reminder here. It's my flashing. Please play house every screen. Um, to enter to win our free. I clicked too many times there. Comical Vante. You have to do one thing, and that is get something for free. To get something for free. It's like an endless repeating, you're in the matrix. You have to simply download, I'm just putting a link in the comments again. Go there, just download, all you have to do is enter your email and you'll get a magazine for free, one free trial copy and you are entered to win, uh, not the actual one that Pete's holding, but it's gonna be shipped directly from Tamiya to you. Comical Avante, you gotta put your own batteries and uh, radio in there. But that uh, will be shipped to you and then all we require is for you to say that we were really sexy on YouTube and that's why you did it. Jeff, you know, we're trying to get Jeff a new hat, even though I sent him a hundred dollar one in the background. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, so just click that. Gears. Yeah, you got a lot that of gears, good. free gears inside there. So yeah. just remember that, and then Jeff can go back to his ranting of. Uh, and by the way, Kevin just posted that racing is broken, and we'll probably agree. I mean, Kevin are grumpy. No, so. and so so I don't agree with Kevin as well. Racing is not broken. <laughs> Race, the, the people are broken. It's the it's the it's the entitlement ribbon era where where everyone. Well, not everyone. Again, I'm not going to stereotype everyone, but back in the day, you 
some of the best racing I ever did was was in this dude's front yard. You peed on a tree. They hand counted laps with a computer looking at your number. It was the most obscure racing ever. It was the most fun. It was two wheel open. There was I don't even know how many heats, a number of heats. And if you were fast, you were in the A main. If you were a beginner, you didn't need a beginner class. You were in a much lower main. You didn't have to run. You didn't watch the A main guys and think, oh, this is so intimidating. I need to put this really fast motor in. You put the motor you could drive and you were in the main you were supposed to be racing with people of an equal skill level. We didn't need beginner. The G main is a beginner class. We didn't need beginner classes and beginner rules and this and that. You just run the system as we have it. The system is sound. You, you start low, you race with your equal skill levels, and you slowly build, gaining confidence and skill as you go until you get into the higher mains. Now we have 10 classes, like I mentioned in, in a past show, where everyone's in the A main and everyone gets their ribbon. It, it, it's, it's the people's attitude that's broken. Go and suck. We all sucked for a long time. Some of us still suck. That's fine. You don't have to win. And listen, a win in a G main is just as important as a win in an A main. You're with your skill group. That's still a win. Suck it up. You don't need to be dominating in your first few weeks or quit or have a special class for you because that guy's too fast and his motor's quicker, his tires are newer. That's all BS, man. It's The racing's not broken. The main, the, the qualifying system and the main system is sound, and it always has been sound. We're breaking it trying to fix something that wasn't broken to begin with, in my opinion. By the way, uh, since a lot of people are graduating virtually, Thank you for the graduation speech and the pump up the world. Uh, you can do anything you want. The world is yours. Speech is great. You can. Is that what I no, <laughs> no, I'm just laughing because I'm thinking of like if you're at a graduation classes. You know what's wrong in this world is that you suck. It's and true. Everyone talks about how racing's broken. And here, add another class so that this guy fits in perfectly. And I don't do think this people classes. added another class. I don't think people added classes to win. I think, I mean, it just became, there's more cars, you know. Well, that, at you one can word it how you want. It's not like it used to be. It, it, I, I did word it how I wanted. That's just, how I wanted. I remember getting faster and faster over time and being stuck in the B main for years and just dreaming to get into the A main. And I'd much rather come last in the A main than first in the B main or whether you're going from the D to the C. This week, you went every week and tried to beat that guy that beat you last week. You never bitched and complained about all the things that people are complaining about now. Yes, oh, they're too fast. Just they break the online. Online. You just complained to your buddies, and it was held to a circle of three because that's Maybe. all the friends have. Maybe. Maybe. That's, but that's, that's where you like, like, the cars are too fast, so they break and it intimidates people and they quit. No. If you can't drive that fast car, don't, don't drive a car that fast. You'll get slower lap times like you're supposed to as you progressively get better. Oh, then you can start putting faster... If, if you're going to say that you don't believe there's any tracks where people have bad attitudes, that's fine. But I'm going to say that I don't believe there's any tracks where people go in, start racing, and they say, I'm not fast in two days, I quit. I, I just don't think that's happening. I, I think well, it's if, if, if you get the list of why people say racing's broken, you'll get you. There, there's a number of points that are, 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 are fixed with just the standard qualifying and main system that we have. You don't need to keep adding different classes or adding, like I said, I'm repeating myself. Adding adding, adding, classes. Adding. The only classes that are being added were when we had the uh, 21.5, 17.5 modified. Those are all gone now. It's just basically whatever the current stock motor fix is and modified. There's no like three levels of motors at this point. No, no, I understand that. I'm not saying with it, but but there's there's Formula One, US, you know, Formula One, USGT, the Tamiya truck class, the touring car, the 12 scale, then a few different motors in there and there are a few different tire materials. And it, it, it has gotten out of hand. You should, and again, I'm not an old guy trying to relive the, the past in this one where no you bad. went to the track and it was two wheel or four wheel drive, no but bad. that was nice. It was nice when you just let the system work. You just raced with your skill set and you always tried to get better, and you had fun doing it. That that was great. I I thought that was great, and that's what I mean by the people are broken and people are complaining about something. It's I mean, now, aren't, now they're, you, they're, they're, aren't you racing other... mini Z's because you can't win at twelve scale anymore? That's what your buddy. <laughs> that's calling. exactly what I'm doing. I'm racing mini Z's. <laughs> I can't win at twelve. If, if we're gonna say racing is broken, I mean, what, what's what's that issue? Isn't people attempting to start trying racing and they don't get into it? It's people who don't even want to try it. Who maybe don't even yeah, find that's it. Okay. That's because rate like where have you ever seen racing being promoted? When have you ever seen a message try RC racing from Roar that was outside of an RC website or publication? Where yeah, well like, you brought it up earlier. Like when I, I have a buddy of mine who runs the Canadian Nats, a, a huge race. I, it's it's it might surpass Cleveland one day with their numbers or Snowbirds kind of thing. Or maybe he already has. People still racing gets, Cleveland. Yeah, I feel that I'm pretty sure Cleveland still happens. Um, I don't think it's as big as it was. 
anyway, like he's getting five, 600. Anyways, he does it in a mall. It was canceled this year because of COVID-19, but he does it in a mall, like you mentioned earlier with some of the Japanese races. So there are ways to get, but people that aren't interested in racing aren't interested in racing. You're not going to change a set of rules. No, no, what I'm saying is that they, get them in. There, there are people who, who would be interested in it, but they don't discover it or they, they discover it and they look at it and say like, this seems really complex and really expensive and like it's a whole really hard kernel armored world that looks hard to penetrate. And but this is my it. point. This that, But that's my entire point. It's not that. Yeah, if you watch the aiming, no, guys, like everything... That. It looks like that from the outside. No, that's fine. Well, then ask a couple more questions or, or have better spokespeople to explain. Yeah, these guys at the top, they're not throwing their radios and yelling, but they're very competitive. They want to do well. But look at these guys with the father and son who are coming dead last and having a great time. They're where they're supposed to be, and they're loving it. That's where you'll be for a while, and, and eventually you'll be well, putting new tires on every run. Let's say father and son they walk into a hobby store like wow i had no idea that there was an rc racetrack and that this kind of stuff went on i'm gonna go walk around and look and like wow those cars are fast that's cool let me talk to this guy he looks nice so what's it cost to get into this well i've got about fifteen hundred dollars in my car and my charge that is two grand that that's you know? what you say you go you, that, you see i've answered that question a number of times i got two grand sitting here in front of me but i'm good you don't need this stuff and you won't need it for a long time. All this shit you see in my, the, all these gauges and and tools and all these batteries and charger systems and motors and gears and all, you don't need any of that for a long, long time. And yeah, I say, go buy some springs and some shock oil and just drive your car. So the guy that ends the conversation that these are 1500 bucks, yeah, that guy's an idiot. Yeah, of course no one's gonna wanna get in. But if you answer the question the way you're supposed to, you don't have to lie, yeah, this is 1500 bucks, but you don't need that. But yeah, you got to remember, people brag about point, everything. Everything. My costs point is not every guy. No, sorry, my point is not every guy answers that question that way. And even if they do, the person still hears blah blah blah, fifteen hundred bucks, and I'm out. You know. Um, yeah, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You know, like 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 I'm not good at riding motocross. Uh, if I wanted to get into motocross and went up to one of the fast guys, and he's like, I got 50 grand here. I wouldn't think to myself, well, then I got to spend 50 grand. Here. I think I suck. I'm not going to appreciate those forks and that tire and all this other stuff. There's also a component of the guy who's asking the question also has to realize that anything super advanced and serious and competitive is going to have different levels to it. Everybody, you got to remember at the track, people like to brag. My car goes twice as fast as it really yeah. is, and it costs twice as much. That's, that's why you me that's why you measure in millimeters because it sounds bigger. Yeah, yeah, right. But I mean, for, <laughs> what you need to do though is twenty-five point four millimeters bottom, from the bottom. <laughs> the more barriers you can take away, instead of explaining that the barrier isn't that big a deal, the I better can't. off you'll be for anything. Yeah. I mean, I just I'm not into this bubble wrapping of everyone to make sure they don't actually hear that my car is worth fifteen hundred bucks or to make sure that they don't think that they. It's just, I. This is what my diatribe is about. Well, everyone I needs to get. I'm sure there are people at Team Associated for a long time who said, you know what, let's never build a ready to run. Let's never, ever make it easy because this is racing. And like, I guarantee you, to me, would love to sell that's as many. That's what I said. Cars, or not to me. The team Associated sells as many cars as possible or any other brand. And that's why they make a drag car that's ready to run. That's why they make a trail truck now. Like, if you, you can't have that big a chip on your shoulder of like, I think it should be pure because – Someone else is going to say, "Well, I think it should." No, be I'm not indicating. No, I'm not indicating that I have a chip on my shoulder that it should be pure. I'm saying the purity of racing is sound. It works. It's a good system. It's well. It welcomes everyone. It's the people that don't like. Why, that is, system. why is it not growing? Why is it not growing? Why is it not? Well, probably for good? the reason you said. A lot of ninety percent of the people don't want to competitively race. They want to grab a beer and jump it over the roof. It's not that racing's broken. It's that racing is. Uh, first of all, a lot of people aren't competitive. They don't. A lot of people. Don't want to. to Everyone competitive. You put two kids in the parking lot. Sorry, I, what, they're going to race for sure. Yes, of course. I, I, that didn't come out right. A lot of people don't want to just do competition. They'd rather go bashing with their friend, and the competition is who can jump the farthest or something. Of course, right. you are, 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 make that part of your of your competition experience. If I don't, if I had a hobby, well, store then track, open up, then open up your your fun park, and then you can start applying that. But well, the racing even you, system. Even if you race at the fun park, I'm going to say, like, look, the way I run it, your race day is four hours. We have um, you're you're broken out by skill, which you can you can call it you know a novice class and the A main. You can call it an A main and a D main if you want. But either way, you'll get to race around people of a similar skill level because that's more fun than getting your ass handed to you. Um, and you'll move up as you get more skilled. That's fine. Yeah. But, so you're uh, just you're just you're just saying apply the working race model to a bash. Uh, situation. Uh, that's okay. That's fine. You're still agreeing. Like the, can, the, what I'm saying is the system is sound. Back, can I bring us back to something real quick? 
Sure. We're talking about ugly ass cars, and uh, I found this only because Pete mentioned the most obscure brand I've ever heard in my life, uh, Mardave. That's been around, I guess, for. Oh, did you look that up? I did because I was looking for ugly cars, and my ugly because a uh, bizarre comment. You assumed Mardave was it. <laughs> I, well, I had to figure one of them was in there, and there's quite a few candidates, but I found this gem. Uh, some may call it sexy, but. That's the actual picture. Oh, 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 oh. That's the actual picture they have on their website to buy it. Yeah, I'm gonna go order one right now. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but that. Well, here's a. Let's talk about racing because that's like a bowling bigger. But can you tell? Yeah, which has which 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 does have a huge following for if the that car has been around. Oh, that's like 1994. Yeah, that's a race car. People don't buy that thing to have just you know. No, I have friends away. that race those bowling cars or the the whatever the, the, the bigger referenced. What's that? Digger or Mardave? No, the Digger one, I think. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, I'm saying the Mardave like, is like a British Digger. I mean, it's a simple pan car. You know, 270 platform. pounds. Yeah. Um, what? Yeah. You could go buy one. You should buy one. Start a class. Oh, all the, this is your dream race that no one else will race any other class but Mardave, whatever that <laughs> ugly thing is called. No, and go no. back to yeah. the purity and sanctity of racing. I'm just, yeah. Anyways, that's fine. <laughs> Anyway, we've been we've uh, listen. I'm gonna go back to this because uh, I'm sure that Marty. Oh, legend! Been, oh yeah, Tony's right. It was a, the legends. Oh, yeah, legends, yeah, yeah. But uh, that Marty has reverse, and Jeff races with reverse. So no matter what he says next, it's getting cut the f off because we're out of here. Hey guys, the show's over. Are we but, done? Uh, let me explain off? what keeps this show going. It's not the terrible quality or the 38 cents. We're actually a magazine you download. And here's a quick video showing you how to do it. It's pretty simple. You get an email, click download. This is on an iPad, so the examples for an iPad, but it's pretty simple and same steps apply for every tablet. Just download it to your tablet, comes on there, make it a library, put it on your iBooks or whatever PDF viewer you like, and then you have full access to all our back issues with flippable pages, links that direct you to an ad if you are interested in the high-tech servo or the a uh, new associated drag car. You just click their links and it brings you right to their website. It's just like a magazine, but on your phone. So you read it in the bathroom, just like good old times, but now it's digital. So remember to wipe your phone down because that's gross. Support us, subscribe, do whatever you need to do. Right.